What's going on guys, Briar Rabbit here. Today we're gonna to be talking about this guy. This is a Shield, it's a Nvidia Shield 4K HDR Android TV. So this is essentially, at its heart, a streaming box, similar to something like an Apple TV or a Roku or even a Fire Stick, but it has a major difference that those other boxes don't offer. And that is the ability to game stream from your PC. And that's primarily what we'll be talking about in today's review. So it is a streaming box. It does things that you expect a streaming box to do, whether you're an Amazon Prime member and you wanna watch those videos, Netflix, YouTube, whatever it is, it does those things. You can watch Twitch, you can watch whatever you want. Uh, and it does it well. It's a fast box. It's much faster than other streaming boxes I have, or especially my smart TV. Uh, it does what it does well. It opens YouTube fast. It opens Netflix fast. It does those things well, and it comes with a pretty good remote. Uh, navigation is done with this kind of touchpad up here. It's got a back button, a home button, and even has Google Assistant built into the remote. So you can ask it to say, play Briar Rabbit videos, and it'll bring up the Briar Rabbit channel on YouTube, stuff like that. It even has a capacitive touchpad down here to raise and lower the volume of your TV, or for my case, a Sonos. And it works pretty well. I gotta say I'd prefer just regular buttons. This thing can be a little bit finicky. Uh, and this runs off of Bluetooth, so you don't have to have direct line of sight for IR. It just kind of works, and it's a good remote. If you compare this to the Apple TV remote, I'd much rather use this day to day than that silly touchpad thing that Apple TV has. Uh, it also has this. This is a Shield controller, and while it may look angular and weird, I gotta say, it's not a bad controller. So this version of the NVIDIA Shield is the $200 version. It comes with 16 gigabytes of onboard memory, uh, and it's a relatively small device. It's a little bit wider than something like an Apple TV, but also a little bit uh, shorter, uh, which makes it easy to fit in. It's not a huge device, it's pretty small. There is a green light that kind of lights up around here, so that may or may not uh, be nice for you. And for con connectivity back here, it's got power, it's got ethernet, HDMI, and a couple of USB uh, inputs. Now, the nice thing about the USB is it can be used to charge up your controller. This is a wireless controller, but it does need to be charged. Uh, you can also plug in a keyboard and mouse to this, uh, and you can also plug in something like an Xbox or PlayStation controller if you don't like the NVIDIA Shield controller, or if you decided to buy the cheaper version. I think it's about $170 or $180 if you get the version that does not include the Shield controller. So, as a streaming box, it's good. It does what you expect it to do, and it does it pretty fast. It's pretty snappy. It has a pretty powerful processor in here that gets the job done. And you can also play Android games, and you can even connect to uh, the NVIDIA, I think it's called GeForce Now experience, where you can basically uh, stream video games off of NVIDIA servers. So if you wanna play, let's say Tomb Raider, you can subscribe to this service, you can download, or you don't even download the game, it streams basically on their servers to this box. Any input you do on your controller has to go over the internet to their server, and then the video comes back from their server over the internet to this box. I didn't actually try out that feature. The main feature I wanted to try out, the reason I bought this thing, and the reason I'm talking to you guys today, is for the in-home game streaming. So the way this works is you plug your NVIDIA Shield into Ethernet. It does work over Wi-Fi, but Ethernet is highly recommended. And this box connects to your PC. So for instance, my PC is up in the office, but I have this in my living room. So what it does is it connects to your PC through Ethernet, and then it'll play games on your PC, but use this controller as the input method or a keyboard and mouse if you plug it into here, and then the video is fed from the PC to this box and out to your TV. It's actually a pretty powerful thing because it, you can play games with this on your PC at 4K in HDR. 
and it works. Uh, I have, admittedly, a pretty powerful computer. It's a i7 8700K with a 1080 Ti graphics card in it. Uh, you do need to have an NVIDIA graphics card to make this work. It uses the GeForce Now experience on your PC that needs to be running. Um, but what it does, it does well. For that purpose, it does work. Playing games at 4K in HDR works on this box if your PC and your network can handle it. So, I was able to play games like Destiny 2, Far Cry 5, uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider, even Skyrim in 4K. Games that support HDR, such as Destiny 2 and Far Cry 5, it worked. It works, frankly, better than plugging a PC into a 4K HDR display, which can be very finicky. Uh, the GeForce experience basically controls the graphical settings of your games on your PC and sets that game up to run well on your 4K HDR display in your living room. Now, this didn't work 100% of the time without any issues whatsoever. Some of the issues that I did have was the game not recommend or not recognizing the controller. Uh, Destiny 2, for instance, just did not want to see this controller. Um, however, I was able to fix that by plugging a controller, a different controller, an Xbox controller, into my PC. At that point, Destiny recognized that there was a controller plugged into the PC. It didn't need to use that controller. It was able to use this controller, but it worked flawlessly using this controller in 4K HDR in my living room. It really worked well. Uh, Far Cry had a different issue. With Far Cry, if Steam was running in the background of my PC, then anytime I clicked the left stick of the controller, then it would bring up the Steam menu. Uh, and it turned out that the, the game wasn't actually rec recognizing the controller as a controller, it was recognizing it as a mouse and keyboard. So for instance, if I wanted to invert the look control, you didn't do that through the gamepad setting, you did it through the mouse and keyboard setting, which is very odd. However, once I actually plugged in a, again, an Xbox controller into the PC, and then I made sure that Steam was quit out, it was not running on my PC, again, I had a flawless experience. I was able to play Far Cry 5 in 4K HDR, on the big screen TV with the controller with no issues whatsoever. So I, I bring up those stories because it's not exactly a flawless experience. And to be honest with you, for each game I wanted to play, I had to do a couple of things. It wasn't just turn on the shield, hit go, and start playing like you'd have on a PlayStation or an Xbox. There was a bit of finesse to getting each game running. Honestly, Rise of the Tomb Raider was probably the easiest thing to get running, and even that had issues initially. Uh, my PC has four displays, essentially, plugged into it. Uh, they're not all displays, actually. There's one 4K monitor, there's one 1080p monitor, there's a 4K capture card, and there's a 1080p capture card. As far as the computer's concerned, it sees all those as four different monitors, uh, and that was causing some issues running Rise of the Tomb Raider at 4K. So what I did is I basically disabled all the other monitors except for the 4K display in the G4 settings menu, and then it worked flawlessly. So again, what I want to say here is that it works, and it works well, but there was a bit of hijinks to it, I'll say. is you, you basically had to, for each game I wanted to play, there was a bit of setup involved for every game. And my assumption is that once you kind of figure all this stuff out, that setup time will become less and less, but there was setup time for each individual game that I wanted to play. Um, I will say this. Overall, the experience is frustrating at the beginning, but very smooth once you start playing. One of the reasons that the experience has been good is this controller. This is the controller that comes with the $200 SKU of the NVIDIA Shield. And if you're planning on playing games with the NVIDIA Shield, I gotta say, I'd recommend the version that does come with the controller. The controller is good. It doesn't look comfortable, but it is. It's essentially mimic, mimicking an Xbox One controller. 
And for that, it does a good job. It feels good. The sticks feel good. It's possibly not as high quality as an Xbox One or a PlayStation controller, but it functions very well. It's comfortable. The buttons are where you expect them to be. It's very responsive. And the battery life has been really good. I haven't actually worn the battery down on this controller uh, since I've owned it. I have charged it a couple of times just because... While I'm not playing with it, I tend to charge things. Uh, but I've had game sessions that go upward of six to seven hours and had no issues with the controller whatsoever. So the battery life is good. The feel of the thumbsticks, the feel of the triggers is good. The buttons all feel good. There's really, I have no complaints with this controller. Now, you can plug in a PlayStation 4 controller. You can plug in an Xbox One controller. I think you can even plug in an Xbox 360 controller. And you can plug in mouse and keyboard to the USB ports on the back of the unit. So, for instance, if you have something like a, a wireless mouse and keyboard that you use on your couch, maybe a lap board of some sort, then you can certainly play with a mouse and keyboard. For me, I was all about kicking my feet up leaning back on the couch and playing some Rise of the Tomb Raider or some Destiny and just using the controller. And for that, it really it really went well. The controller is pretty nice. It looks weird. It doesn't look like it'd be comfortable because of all the angles on it. But I got to say, I really did enjoy it. The last thing I really want to talk about is lag. Is there lag with this box? Can you feel it when you're gaming? Yes. The answer is definitely yes. You can feel it. It's not awful. You can totally get past it. You can kind of get used to it. I wouldn't want to be a competitive gamer trying to, you know, rank up in uh, Overwatch or, you know, whatever game, whoever, whatever you're playing. I wouldn't want to, like, do competitive first-person shooting with this. For that, I'd much rather be in front of my PC with a mouse and keyboard. Uh, getting the best possible experience. But for a single-player campaign, for having your feet up, it really doesn't make that big a difference. If you think about it, really... Your, your input has to go from the controller to the box, from the box over Ethernet to your PC. Your PC translates that, makes an image. That image has to come from the PC over Ethernet to this box and then over HDMI from this box to the TV. And at any point in this, you can be introducing lag. Is there How much lag is in the controller? I don't know. How much lag is in the Ethernet transfer of the controls to the... PC. I don't know how much you know. How much lag is there in the the display of the image from the PC to the to the box? I don't know how much how much display lag is there in my TV. Again, I don't know. There's lag though, and you can feel it, especially if you're used to playing on a high refresh rate monitor with a mouse and keyboard. You can definitely feel the difference. It's just something I got used to very quickly, though. You know, modern shooters, like playing Rise of the Tomb Raider or Far Cry, you know, they, they pretty much have a lot of aim assist in them. So when you're using a controller, you just kind of get near the enemy and let aim assist kind of take care of the rest. It's going to kind of lock on. A lot of games have kind of snap to lock on as well. So when you aim, it just kind of snaps to the nearest person. So using a controller really helps with the lag because the aim assist does a lot of the, the fine tune aiming for you. When you're most gonna feel the lag, I think is really precision moments where, you know, maybe you're playing, you know, a really precise like uh, platformer game, or even if you're if you've got to do a lot of precision shooting at far distances where aim assist may not take over for you, uh, then you might feel it a lot. But for the most part, you really kind of get used to it. You you find that you kind of forget about the lag it's not it doesn't break the experience it doesn't really hurt the experience too much there's an initial shock to it and then you kind of get over it the amount of lag you're going to experience really does depend a lot on your environment how fast is your network how fast is your router how fast is your tv a lot of those things are going to influence that so you know, and there are things you can do to reduce the lag. You can you could stream at a lower quality setting to reduce the lag, but you won't get the the highest fidelity of images. So, you know, it's something that you get used to. It's definitely not the same as having you know a wired controller plugged into a into a PC sitting right next to the monitor. It's it it's a noticeable feeling, but. Like I said, it's really not game breaking. When you're playing Rise of the Tomb Raider, when I was playing Far Cry Five, even playing Destiny, it really it didn't bother me, uh, and you just kind of get used to it. So 
overall experience with this thing is, is it worth $200? That's a hard decision to make. Look, Valve sells this guy. <laughs> this is, I think they call it the Steam Box. Essentially, it does most of what this does, but for far less money. At times, Valve even sells this on the Steam Store for five or ten dollars. And just like this, you plug it into Ethernet, you plug it into power, it's got a couple of USBs in it, and you just go. It connects to your Steam library and you can play 90% of your games using a controller like a PlayStation 4 controller or an Xbox One controller uh, or a mouse and keyboard on your TV. Now, what are the differences between the two? Why would you want the NVIDIA Shield over something that you could get for five or $10? The main difference is this supports 1080p, this supports 4K HDR. So if that makes a difference to you, then this is nice. Is it $200 nice? I don't know, I don't know, that's really up to you. That's gonna depend on how good your TV is, it's gonna depend on how good your computer is, it's gonna depend on a lot of factors. I will say that for the most part, I really enjoyed this thing while I was using it. Uh, now being able to play games like Far Cry 5 or Destiny 2 at 4K HDR, uh, you know, I'm really impressed with this box. Uh, there is a bit of cooling to this box. You can see there's some grills on the bottom. There's some grills in the front. Uh, I don't believe there's a fan. I think it's just passive cooling. Uh, the box is very small. It feels well built. It's very plasticky. Uh, you basically turn it on by hitting any button on either the uh, remote or on the controller. Uh, the controller does have quite a bit of functionality. Uh, you can access any in-game menus. Basically, it's got a start and a select button. Uh, then it's got a special GeForce button where you can get into the menu of the of the NVIDIA Shield. Uh, so overall, you know, if you want, if the goal is to get 4K HDR, you know, it's a lot cheaper than buying a second PC for your living room. It's a lot easier than moving your PC into the living room if you currently have it set up in the office or the game room. And, you know, I'm able to play a game like Destiny 2 or Far Cry 5 at 4K, 60 frames per second, HDR, and that's not something that PlayStation 4 Pro or Xbox One X can offer me. So... Yeah, this is $200, but it's not $500 like an Xbox One X, and it's not $400 like a PlayStation 4 Pro. But you do need a $3,000 PC to really get the most out of it. So value-wise, you know, it's really going to be up to each individual user. Do you have a TV that can take advantage of it? Do you have a computer that can take advantage of it? If you just want to get 1080p, 60 frames per second gaming, then again, the Steam Link will definitely do that for you. And like I said before, I never had much of a problem with the Steam Link at all. Uh, it does pay, use that Ethernet. Use the Ethernet on both of these. If you have something like this, make sure you've got it plugged into Ethernet. Don't try and use Wi-Fi. Even if your Wi-Fi is good, it's not as good as Ethernet. So... For $200, I'll be keeping this. I'm not going to be returning it because um, what I've found is that I really like being able to play some of my PC games in the living room at 4K 60 frames per second. It's been very appealing. I've liked the controller. I was a little worried about the controller, but I figured well, I'll just plug in an Xbox controller or a PlayStation controller if I don't like it. But to be honest with you, I like the controller. I'm very satisfied with the controller. Um, and the media features work well too. Um, Netflix works flawlessly. YouTube is very fast. The, I gotta say, just using like the regular navigation features, like if you compare this to a smart TV or even my Apple TV, I have the 4K Apple TV, this just feels faster and snappier. Uh, just, I don't know if it's the processor or if it's because the UI is slimmed down or if this is really my first experience with Android TV as an operating system. Um, so I don't know if it's always that snappy, but it feels really snappy and really good. So overall, I've been very impressed with it. For $200, it's really, you know, individually, you got to make up that decision. Is it going to be worth $200 to you? That's a decision that you have to make. For me, it was definitely worth it. It's, it's really improved my gaming life because now I don't have to compromise between playing 1080p if I want to play in the living room. I can now play in the living room uh, 
4K with HDR at 60 frames per second, and that's really been good. So thank you guys for watching this review. Let me know if you guys liked it. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Uh, there's definitely some other things that this thing does that I didn't really talk about. You can actually plug it in and just run Android games. You can plug it in and run the GeForce Now service, which is a subscription service. Uh, there's all sorts of things you can do with this that I didn't really cover in this review. Really, I wanted to talk about game streaming and for the that, I gotta say, I'm very impressed with the box. Thank you guys for watching. Hit that subscribe button if you liked the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.